So we had the hunting season. We couldn't stop the hunting season. In 2013, we had the wolf hunting season. 22 wolves were killed. And I'm sure every one of us have heard the reason we're having this wolf hunt is to reduce conflicts, to deal with conflicts. And so again, I spend a lot of time writing and send requests. And I sent a request to the DNR asking just exactly where these wolves were killed. And I got the list. A pair were killed right outside Porcupine Wilderness State Park. They were miles from any kind of conflict. One of them was a, a collared animal, and we believe, I believe, it's these animals, because these animals were photographed right outside Porcupine State Park. One of them was wearing a collar, uh, male and female, and they were killed during the hunt. Another one was killed in the heart of the Sturgeon River Gorge Wilderness, places where we want wolves to be. Um, federal and state lands, Pricket Dam, Pricket Dam area, uh, the Ottawa National Forest. Only one of the 22 wolves killed was actually near a farm. One of the 22. But yet, if you hear some of the powers that be from me and our talking, it was to reduce conflict. And they were within five miles of a known depredation. I've heard that one a few times. Well, when I looked at the depredations, yeah, technically they're probably right. But some of those depredations took place in 2010. There was no evidence that the wolf killed was even alive when the depredation took place four years ago, let alone be involved with the farm. So, where do we go from here? We have the two ballots on the proposal. They still were not convinced because they knew we were getting all these signatures and we were gonna turn in our signatures. We came up, oh wait, not we, a group came up with the Scientific Fish and Wildlife Conservation Act. It protects the rights to hunt and trap fish and hunt and trap and fish in Michigan. Um, the thing with this particular act, they went through that second ballot proposal. When I said referendum state early on, I said you can either go directly to the legislature or you can challenge a new law passed. They went the route of going directly to the legislature. And in some ways, that was a pretty smart move. Legislature already approved it twice, but they could just get the signatures by telling people, protect their hunting rights, it can go, be sailed through the legislature, and that's exactly what it did. It didn't even need the governor's signature. And why that's significant is back when Public Act 21 was being uh, tossed around the legislature, it also had an appropriation in there. And when it had the appropriation in there, the governor threatened to veto it. So the governor would not um, sign the law if it had that million dollar appropriation for Asian carp. So it was taken out. We challenged it through the signature ballot proposal. And so now they bypassed even the governor. And um, it doesn't go to the voters. It was supported by the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, Safari Club International, MUCC. And it's a mirror image of Public Act 21, except it includes an appropriation of a million dollars for Asian carp. And why I say that's unnecessary is because it, it's already federal and state money to address Asian carp. It's part of the Great Lakes Restoration Program. And the whole purpose of that appropriation is to prevent a challenge through signatures. Because if they had just gone the regular route, we would be able to challenge it again with signatures. But with that appropriation, we can't do that. And it also allows free licenses for military personnel. Military personnel only pay a dollar. They only pay a dollar for their military license. And the reasons for that is because we get federal funding through Pittman Robinson for every paid hunting, hunting license and through a federal funding through Dingle Johnson funds for every fishing license paid. So by paying a dollar, the state gets a kickback from the feds on Pittman Robinson and Dingle Johnson funds by free military licenses, the state's gonna lose that money. But they don't wanna talk about that. And so this legislation passed August of 2014. It becomes effective in the spring of 2015. So this law will kick in, except that it appears to be unconstitutional. I'm not a lawyer, 
and, but the lawyers are pouring through all this and believe it's unconstitutional on several grounds. For one thing, the state constitution has a provision that says we have to have, a, any laws passed have to be a single issue. And this one doesn't meet the test, it has three issues. Also, the name of the law, the Scientific Fish and Wildlife Conservation Act, has nothing to do with what the body of the language of the law is to give uh, the NRC authority for game and uh, fishing licenses and hunting licenses for the military. So we'll see what happens. 